Fernando Duterte Carpio, feud puts spotlight on Philippines Vice President. The spot between her father, Rodrigo Duterte, and her boss, President Ferdinand Marcos Jr., threatens the alliance that brought the two to power in 2022. Si Sara Duterte Carpio, ang vice presidente ng Pilipinas at ang paboritong pumalit kay Pangulong Ferdinand Marcos Jr. ay natagpuan ng kanyang sarili sa pag-navigate sa isang imposibleng awayan sa pagkita ng Pangulo at ng kanyang sariling ama. Inakusahan ni dating Pangulong Rodrigo Duterte si Marcos noong nakaraang buwan ng paggamit ng troka at ipinalutang sa publiko ang ideya ng isang kudeta ng militar upang mapatalsik ang Pangulo. Noong nakaraang linggo, iminungkahin niya paghihiwalay ng Mindanao, isang isla sa timog at ang base sa kanyang kapangyarihang pampolitika. Sabi nga sa mga balita, Sara Duterte Carpio, the Philippine Vice President and the odds on favorite to succeed President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. has found herself navigating an impossible feud between the President and her own father. Former President Rodrigo Duterte accused Marcos last month of using drugs and publicly floated the idea of a military coup to unseat the President. Last week, he proposed the secession of Mindanao, a southern island, and the base of his political power. Marcos initially responded by saying his predecessor's judgment had been impaired by his use of the synthetic opioid fentanyl, which he previously admitted to using to recover from a motorcycle incident. He also said the call for a separate Mindanao was doomed to fail, and his National Security Advisor threatened to use force to quell any secession attempts. The ongoing political spot has used the 30 Carpio in a bind, threatening to unravel the alliance crafted by her and Marcos before they were elected in 2022. She has recently split with the president on several issues, including the government reopening, peace talks with communist rebels, and an ongoing investigation of her father's deadly drug war by the International Criminal Court. But the Marcos administration's effort to change the Philippine constitution has created the biggest cleavage between the country's two most prominent political families. Marcos says he wants to remove existing constitutional restrictions that limit foreign investment. Critics in the Duterte political camp, however, accused Marcos of plotting to switch the country to a parliamentary system and install House Speaker Martin Rompaldes. Marcos cousin and a close ally as his successor before the next presidential election in 2028. The 30 Carpio has tried to remain neutral even as her father's attacks on the president have continued. She was the only member of the Duterte family to appear with Marcos last week when the president visited flood-hit areas of Mindanao. She wants to keep the Marcos Duterte alliance together, said Walton Bello, an adjunct professor of sociology at the State University of New York, at Binghamton and former member of the Philippine House of Representatives. That sort of political arithmetic was the key in 2022, and that's going to be key in 2028. Not just her father's daughter. The Marcos Duterte Alliance was formed after Duterte Carpio shocked the country by opting not to run for president in 2022, even though she was the odds and favorite. Instead, she defied her father's wishes and opted to run for vice president and support Marcos' presidential bid. In the Philippines, the president and vice president are elected separately. Her decision all but ensured the pair would win and prevented an upset victory by opposition candidate Lenny Robledo. The former vice president and a vociferous critic of the Duterte's drug war. It was a perfect marriage for the 2022 election, said Clive Argueles, 
Chief Executive of the Pooling Firm, WR Numero Research. It was also an early sign of the 30 Carpius autonomy from her father, whom she succeeded as mayor of Davao, the largest city in Pindanao. During her time as mayor, she replaced staffers loyal to her father and forged her own set of alliances, including a bond with Ivy Marcos, the current president's sister. The two remained politically aligned. She's not just her father's daughter, Arguella said. Duterte Carpio also cuts a figure different from many of the country's past prominent female politicians, who have often cast themselves as maternal figures. As Davao Mayor, she made headlines for punching a court sheriff. She often wears military fatigues and has joked about cutting her hair short when she wants to appear tough. After their election win, Duterte Carpio publicly said she wanted to be named Defense Secretary. In the Philippines, it is common for the vice president to also take a cabinet position, but Marcos named her Education Secretary, which was widely seen as a snub. That was a very quick lesson that, oh, you're not president, Arguella said. There's no such thing as sharing presidential powers. Last year, the 30 Carpio was heavily criticized for requesting about $11.6 million in confidential funds, which would be used without oversight in the 2024 national budget. The controversy pulled down her public approval rating from 84% in June 2023 to 73% in September, still higher than that of Mark who registered 65% approval. It also created the perception that Marcos' allies, especially Speaker Valdez, were plotting against her. She's kind of stuck in this alliance. Arquella said she can totally abandon the administration because she knows it's going to be fatal. Double game! Duterte Carpio's father and her younger brother, current Davao Mayor Sebastian Duterte, have continued to pressure the president during speeches in Mindanao, and the country's economic realities could help their cause. Inflation fell to 2.8% in January, down from 3.9% in December. Price inflation, however, hits its highest level since 2009, reaching 22.6% and threatening a Marcus campaign promise to stabilize prices of the staple food. The Duterte's are going to really play that up. Bella said, using four overpriced prices to give energy to their opposition to changing the constitution, which many presidents including Duterte have tried and successfully since it was ratified in 1987. Marcus insists his motivations are economic in nature, aimed at removing limits on foreign ownership in companies operating in the Philippines, but that has not quelled speculation that it is a ploy to block a Duterte Carpio campaign by switching to a parliamentary system under which elected representatives would build a coalition and choose a prime minister. Duterte Carpio has been cautious in expressing her own opposition to constitutional change, directing her public ire at Romualdez rather than Marcos. In past weeks, both Marcos and Duterte Carpio have insisted they remain on good terms. But political maneuvering by the Marcos camp pressures Duterte Carpio, who is not a natural politician, said Tony Lavina, Associate Director of Climate Policy and International relations for Manila Observatory. Everything is black and white for the 30 Carpio. From what we've seen, he said, she doesn't have any patience for this course. The Duterte's are also growing worried about the ongoing ICC drug war investigation. The hug base court could issue a warrant of arrest for the 30 in the coming months. And while Marcos has said the Philippines would not cooperate with the ICC, he also said its investigator may enter the country on their own terms. Duterte Carpio did not seek an early split but I think that things ran out of control.
Well, it's said she's going to try and kill the end to play this double game. It has had the effect of eroding the opposition and turning Philippine voters into an audience for a family feud. Well, it's said it's the politics of a spectacle that's going to reign over the next few years. At sa naging issue ng ito, ano ang yung naging reaction? Maging malaya magpigay ng kanilang personal na opinion sa comment section. Anyways, for more Chikabe updates, don't forget to like and subscribe!